Our God and our Father, we thank you for allowing us to assemble in your presence. We thank you for the day's journey that you have assigned us to complete. And thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us to spread out to you, this your children. And we ask, Lord, that you anoint this word and anoint us as we continue to be about your business. And we continue to give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we'll be coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, verses 17 through 22. We'll be coming from the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, verses 17 through 22. And it reads as follows. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If you, if so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to to the deceitful lust. We're going to stop right there. Just for a few minutes, we're going to talk on change your ways and follow the Lord. Amen. Change your ways and follow the Lord. Here we see where Paul is talking to the church at Ephesus. He's trying to teach them to continue to follow the way of the Lord. This is Paul's third missionary journey to Ephesus. He had started this church. This was one of the early churches after Christ had appointed him the task of starting a church for the Gentiles and teaching them the way of the Lord. And Paul took this job serious. He loved his young churches and he wanted them to be blessed because he himself knew that he had been blessed by the Lord himself. He also had sent people to help them in their word, and Tissachus was one, and Timothy was another. He always thought about the early church. Even though sometimes it would get him in trouble, he still took no denial to the word of Christ. See, Paul was just like some of us. We had to be converted on the Damascus Road. All of us at one time have transgressed and fallen from the Word of God. Saul of Tarshish didn't fall from the Word. He didn't follow the Word. He was a Pharisee, and he believed in what he had learned, and he did it to the utmost, and he believed that if you did against what the, the elders and the Pharisees and the scribes were teaching, that you would be punished for it. And he did what he did well. And some of us, we done the same thing. You know, it's amazing. I was laying in the bed and I was thinking how so many of us have been blessed by the Lord. The Lord mm -hmm. saw us in our wrongdoing and he came to us and turned us around and gave us a chance to get it right and follow him. But after we accepted Christ, we thought that everybody else was beneath us. We, we didn't think that they was good enough to even come and fellowship in our church buildings. We thought that everything was focused around us. Mm -hmm. And I thank God that he has no respect to person because 
Saul was letting the churches know that first of all, you knew who I was. You knew I was Saul of Tarshish back before I met up with the Lord on the Damascus Road. And he told me what to do, how to do, when to do, and what not to do. And he taught me and he sent me where I needed to go in order to be taught, in order to lead his people. So many of us are not led by the right spirit. We let man lead us instead of letting the Lord lead us. But I'm not trying to put nobody down. I'm just saying you don't exalt nobody but the Lord. Mm -hmm. My Bible tells me that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and don't put nobody where Jesus Christ belongs. And I thank the Lord that some of us have focus in on what we need and Paul was trying to let the church know first of all you've come a long way I know that you're a metropolis city I know that you have a lot but one thing you didn't have that you have now you didn't have Christ Jesus on your side and when you accepted him as your leader and your savior we knew that things were going to come upon you to try to pull you down. And mm -hmm. This is what the world is full of, rejection and mistreatment and hatred. The world we live in now, we can't wake up not one day without hearing about somebody that has transgressed against somebody else. But I tell people, the Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank him for what you have and don't begrudge somebody else for what they have because if they have it, God has enough to give it to you also. And some things I found out we don't need in a way. It might pull us away from following the Lord. So here it said, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. So many people are walking with so many ungodly things in their minds and they figure out and try to go against people and try to figure out how to take what don't belong to them. We as Christians can't do that. It's having an understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. A whole lot of hard-hearted people are going to find out that that wasn't the right way. I know I haven't loved like I'm supposed to all the time, and I might not love the way I'm supposed to now, but I do have the spirit of love in my heart, and every day the Lord can teach me a little more about how to love my fellow man, who being, say, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to this chivalrous work and uncleanness, with greediness. Don't try to take advantage of people. Mm. That's what he's trying to say. Yeah. If you know that it don't belong to you, leave it alone. We're down here to try to help, not to try to destroy. Not to be like the rich ruler sitting up on his high chair looking down on people because he had an abundance. And you know, if you tell the truth, you see this all around us today. So many have don't want the people that don't have to have anything. Brothers and sisters, even I'm looking at the television where they're trying to stop the uh, Medicare where the people with pre needs and uh, the, all this uh, help that they're giving people that don't have, they're trying to take it away from the people and a whole lot of people going to die behind this. But you know, death is in the hands of the Lord. But we need to try to figure out what can we do to help somebody, not try to hurt them. But I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in because I do know that one day every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and he is the Savior of the world. So let us look past hating people and trying to hurt people and try to help one another Nashville, Tennessee, it's got a lot of people in Nashville, a lot of people that love, and got a lot of people that don't love, people that hate. Everybody that you look at, 
don't know how to follow the Lord. That's, right. That's why we have to try to teach them. We, we don't put nobody down because Saul of Tasha said, let me tell y'all something. At one time, I know I was a sinner. I know that I transgressed. I know that I did wrong things in the sight of the Lord. But see, let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, when he grieve, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you're going to pay for it. He's, let me tell you something. You can't get around doing what the Lord tells you. If he told you to do it once, he's not going to change his mind. We are the ones that change our minds. I thank the Lord that he give us a new spirit. It's a being renewed in the spirit of your mind. We got to change our walk, change our talk, change the way we treat people and do what the Lord tells us because he said, I'm the God of love. Mm -hmm. And if I love you, you should love one another. He said, you're going to have to put on the new man and take off the old man. If you're created in righteousness, you got to be true in holiness. In other words, I told you last week, he said, if they strike you on the right cheek, turn the left also. Uh, people take that vividly and they say, well, I ain't gonna let nobody hit me. That's not what he's trying to say. He's trying to say, let the spirit in you not strike back. He's trying to say, pray for them that they spitefully misuse you. He's trying to tell us, if you know me, you got to love me. Mm -hmm. You got to give up something in order to follow me. I think the Bible said, let a man deny himself, pick up his cross and follow the Lord daily. This passage containing an astounding truth. Believers are not neither Gentiles or Jews. They are a third race of people. Therefore, they are not to walk like men. They are to walk like Christ. We were once a man. We was once a lost man. But now we found the Lord in our life and now we got Christ in us and we're his children, so we got to walk the way the Father has told us to walk. Thank God for a change in us because it said, any man being Christ, this is Paul talking, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you don't know the Lord by now, you got time to get yourself again into the realm of the safety of the Lord. Uh, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. We need to be born again. Yes, we came up and we, some of us are older than others. Some of us are 25, 45, 55, I'm 75. But I do know that I had to have a change in my walk and a change in my talk. And he changed me when I was 30 years old and I've been walking this way for over 45 years now. Hadn't always got it right, but I hadn't always got it wrong either. I still trust in the Lord. AZ, if we don't know anything at all, we know that the Lord's been good to us. Yes. And if we change our ways and follow the Lord, he will bless us. Mm -hmm. And not only will he bless us, he'll bless our loved ones and the people around us. Mm -hmm. Because he said, let your light so shine before men that you glorify the Father which is in heaven. Thank God for a change in our hearts. So Paul was a good man. Paul let him know. Now look, I know that I was rejected. I know I was talked about. I know I was cast in jail. I was shipwrecked. I had all of these things against me because darkness was coming up on me. But I never gave in and I never gave up. I still trusted in the Lord. I thank the Lord that he cares for us and he think about us even when we don't think about ourselves and one another. He loves us so much. He told me to let you know, let your mind be also in you that is in Christ Jesus. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Trust the Holy Spirit. Do the right thing. Make him smile. Don't make him cry. Because brothers and sisters, when the world beats you down, you got to say, I'm oppressed towards the prize of a high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I know I can walk out of this church right now and go down on the boulevard and I find something 
that will change my mind if I allow Satan to take charge of my life and my mind. But I ain't gonna let Satan have no control over me because I told somebody the other day, the absence of the Lord in your life means that Satan is coming in to try to rule over you. Uh, see, I don't, I don't project that I'm perfect, but the idle mind is the devil's workshop. I don't try to think about bad things. I got enough that I got to answer for without going around trying to project bad things in my life or in nobody else's life. We need to pray. Now, a lot of times we don't have what the people need to give them, but we can point them to the right source, and that source is Jesus. Tell them that the Lord will make a way somehow. I remember a, young, a man I loved, he's passed and gone now. He used to sing a song, sit down, servant, sit down, and rest a little while. One day we're going to all rest in the presence of the Lord, but we're going to have to go through some things in order to get where we need to go. I think Paul said in Ephesians 6, finally, my brother, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we got to realize that sin is all around us. It's to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and to take on the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You're going to have to take all of God. You can't just take part of Him and lay part of Him down. I know some of us have said that I'm going to have to lay the Lord down right now and I'll pick Him up after a while, but while after a while don't belong to you and you don't have a right to lay Him down. Once the Lord come in your life, you don't have a right to lay Him down at any time because, see, time don't belong to none of us. And if we thank God for what He's done, just look around you. Look at your loved one. Look at your children. Look at your family member. Look at your mother and father. Look at your neighbors and see how good God has been. When you see that ambulance going down the street and the fire engines following them, and they didn't come to your house, they went down the road and to give you another chance to try to get it right. You supposed to start praying for whoever it is right then because see the thing of it is the Lord had mercy on you and your loved ones and passed your house and you ought to thank God that he's gonna take care of the situation down the streets and tell the people that the Lord will take care of you because I wanna tell you something, if he can take care of a sinner like me, he can take care of you. That's why Saul of Tasha said, now let me tell you something, now, I've met the Lord and the Lord changed me and he changed my walk and mm -hmm. he changed my talk, he changed my name, huh? he changed my the ways that I was doing things and he let me know that if I just walk up right, no good thing would he behold from me and he took my name from Saul of Tasha and made me Paul an apostle and I thank the Lord yeah I went in jail I got beat I got whipped I got spit on I got shipwrecked and all of the things I told you about a few minutes ago but there's one thing there's one thing I didn't give up on I didn't give up on the name of the Lord because he told me that he always be with me he just wanted me to be his servant and he wanted me to take on the, the, the things down here that Satan is trying to overtake with his children because so many of us don't know the true word and we're going out there and we're looking for favors in 
down times that we're looking for things that tickle our fancy that tell you something that the word of God don't change for nobody. If you, you want the Lord in your life, uh, first of all, you got to accept him in. Uh, he don't uh, force himself on nobody. And, uh, when he come in, he bring blessings with him. Somebody said, uh, if you sit up praises, uh, he's going to send down blessings. Uh, and I know that he's blessing us uh, right now. Uh, yeah, we woke up this morning uh, and the temperature was kind of cool. Uh, but thank God uh, that you did know that you woke up. Uh, Cause somebody laid down last night uh, didn't wake up this morning uh, and they might not have known the Lord uh, and he gave us another chance uh, to try to get connected with him uh, and I want to thank him uh, for being a merciful God uh, I woke up this morning uh, with my mind uh, trained on Jesus, uh, I woke up this morning uh, wanting to walk with him uh, wanting to talk with him uh, I woke up this morning uh, thinking about how good uh, he's really been to us uh, and I tell you what, all the things I thought about still wasn't all of the goodness that he did for us because he did things for people that we don't know nothing about because see when Jesus does it he don't have to go and tell nobody he don't need a pat on the back he said if you're hungry I'll feed you if you're naked I'll clothe you if you don't have shelter I'll be shelter over you I'll be a sure foundation I'll be God all by myself all I want you to do uh, is follow me. Uh, look to the hills uh, from which comes your help. Uh, Cause all your help uh, come from the Lord. Uh, if you just change your ways uh, and follow the Lord, uh, things will work out. Uh, thank God uh, for his goodness uh, and his mercy. Uh, thank God uh, for waking us up uh, on this morning, uh, starting us uh, on our way. Uh, didn't he wake us up? Uh, didn't he tell you something? Uh, if Satan had his way, uh, he'd destroy all of us. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Huh? The Lord let me know huh? a long time ago. Huh? If I be for you, huh? I'm more in the world against you. Who in the world huh? can't be against you? I'm God. Huh? I created huh? the heavens and the earth. Huh? I saw the ending huh? with the beginning. Huh? I saw everything huh? before it even came to pass. Huh? Good God Almighty. Huh? AZ, huh? I feel like huh? he's here right now. Huh? He's trying to let us know huh? we got to change our ways. Huh? So we say, well, let me tell you, I know what they did down the street. And let me tell you, I'm not that bad. You don't have to be that bad. If you transgress with one wrong thing, you done just as much as them. You got to change your thoughts in order to follow the Lord. Let me tell you something. If somebody's down and you looking at them and you laughing at them, don't do it. It might be one of God's angels trying to let you know you need to change your walk and you need to change your talk. Satan got you, but if you come back to the Lord, he'll work it out. Do Lord, show me the way and guide me on the road and never let me and go astray till I get home, home to God. What a fellowship we have in Jesus. All our griefs and sins he'll bear. Don't you know that he'll take care of everything and that we need. He said, if you need me, just call me. I lay low in Zion. I'm a stone. I'm a cry stone. I'm a person. And he led to cornerstone. The judgment. I lay to the line. And righteousness to the plum. All you got to do is call on me. Let me tell you something. It's never too late to call on the name of Jesus. Don't let nobody tell you that Jesus can't hear a sinner's prayer. Because if he couldn't, he would wouldn't have heard mine a long time ago. All he wants us to do is humble ourselves and call on him and watch what he can do. That job you say I can't find, he already got it. All he wants you to do is go out and fill out the application. He's already sit in the seat to hire you. He said he was hiring workmen. He was hiring servants who work in his vineyard. And he said what's right? He appeals. I thank the Lord for being just and being kind. He can feed us. But when we're hungry, he can close us when we're naked. Yeah. He can do things mm -hmm. that the world can't do. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something. My Lord can never do wrong. He's able to lift up, bow down his, 
and give ease to our troubling mind. For some of us need to hear this today. We need to change our ways and follow the Lord. And somebody said, well, I would go to church, but all of them devils are in the church, and I don't want to go in there with them. I might want to stay out here. Well, let me tell you something. The devil is everywhere that you are. The devil goes to church. And what better place is it to find the devil than in the church? Because I'm going to tell you, if you go to church and the devil start picking on you, you don't have to say nothing but stop in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to get the word of God. I don't need you, Satan, interrupting me in my fellowship and my worship and of my Lord. Because the Bible let me know that the devil is envious, he's jealous, and he don't want Jesus to have no followers. He's corrupt. And let no real corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Because if you're a child of the king, you can expect him to come up on you every day. But that's why I said, pray without ceasing. Thank the Lord for being good to you. Thank the Lord that when you woke up this morning and you was in your right mind, that he gave you a chance to talk to him. Because I promise you, all of us have got something that we need to ask forgiveness for. And if you don't, I do. And I ask the Lord to change my walk and change my talk. Make me the servant that you have me to be. He's been good to us. And I thank the Lord for blessing us and bringing us this far by faith. Without the faith of the Lord, where would we be? Without the help of the Lord, we couldn't do nothing. Without him taking care of this old world down here, we will be in a bad way. We're looking at things now as it has never happened. But there's nothing happened today that had never happened before. He took care of his children back when Paul was walking around A.D. 53, after the death of Jesus, and he's taking care of things in the year 2020. 2020 has been a hard year, but we know that God has a plan, and everything happens, happens for a reason. I believe he's just trying to tell this world, get right church and let's go home. But you ain't go nowhere until your time come. We don't need to give up. Pray for that person to say, I don't know the Lord. I want to learn of him and I want to follow him. If he can be good to you like that, will he be good to me too? Yes, he will. Because he has no respect to person. He loves us one and all. All he wanted to do is teach us how to love one another. That's why Paul was trying to tell the church at Ephesus, you can't be the way that those other Gentiles are. You've accepted Christ, you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and once he changed you, don't look back because he got blessings waiting on you that you don't know anything about. Trust him. Give your life to him. Pick up your cross daily and follow him and watch what he will do for you. I thank God for giving us another chance. And I thank him for meeting us here on this morning and allowing us to worship in spirit and in truth. We pray that somebody will be converted that don't know the Lord and come saying, what must I do to be saved? Accept them. Don't beat them down for the time they wouldn't with the Lord. Thank God that they changed their minds and changed their walk and they changed their talk. Our responsibility is to try to go out and make disciples, make servants. The changing part comes with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We don't have a heaven to hell to put nobody in. But if you want your loved ones to make it home with the Lord, tell them they need 
need to change their ways and follow the Lord because the Lord's been too good to us to be unkind. Thank you. God bless you and forever keep you. And a special prayer for all the sick and the shut in all over the land and the country. And may God be with you and forever keep you. Amen.